Hello everyone and welcome to the second part of the horoscope for the 1st of August 2022. Now, as I said in the first part, this is a very, very big and important week, month and basically a gateway to the rest of the year and the rest of the karmic pattern that is playing out because we have the meeting of Mars, the North Node and Uranus in the sky. Mars is the activator, the energizer. The North Node is the collective karma and also individual karma, where it is that we need to go collectively. And Uranus is surprise, surprise, the quantum leap, the awareness, the truth, and also change, powerful change, rebellion, revolution. And Venus in the sign of Cancer borders ethnicity, et, et, ethnicity, I always say that word wrong, sorry. So uh, borders and cultural values, and they harmonize cultures, hand in hand but why not because they necessarily love each other necessity need neighbors this is where either become mortal enemies and we see this playing out on the world stage unfortunately or they become you know best friends out of need this is where whatever you've done in my history i forgive you let's just help each other and the, the other neighbor says i totally agree so that's what will happen. So this is where ethnic, ethnicity and even cultural dif distance, uh, differences sorry, are all of a sudden value to everyone alike. You know, especially to cultures who lived close to each other for a lot of time. This is where each other's cultural values are more valuable to the other culture than to the self. So we will see a lot of cultures feeding each other. And why? To defend themselves from other cultures which they strongly do not agree with. For example, this is where there are going to be big dis divisions between the, the same culture. This is, for example, capitalists are going to be the next enemy. This is where everyone will run away from them. So this will mean running away into the rural areas and masses, mass migration. And the city will be barren. But not barren from people, from values, from the soul energy. And maybe I shouldn't really be speaking about, but this is what the astrology says, simple as that. So, we will see the very, very, very first signs of that. And why this is Uranus, the rebel. And rebe moving away is a very usual, simple, quite easy gesture of rebellion. Not fighting, you know. Some people don't really fight. They just move away. Bye. They just leave the conflict. That's their act of rebellion. So... We will see this playing out, on the, but the same goes for employment, because employment, what it is that we do with our time, Saturn, if you spend more time uh, at work than with your husband, ch child, wife, whatever it is, or whoever it is that is important, or the divine, well then that's very important to you, that you sacrifice that. And right now Uranus will ask, may force you do ask yourself, is it worth it? Is my time worth it? This is where you say, well, look job, <laughs> company, director, boss, whatever. All my life, I kind of played your game. It was your way or the highway. Well, now it's my way or a highway. And I'm not even going to get give you the chance to compromise. I'm going to leave you. Bye. And, you know, okay, I play with this verbally and I make it out as a, you know, a, a, a joke, yeah, but unfortunately, in some parts of the world or in lives of some people, it's going to be literal how I play with this, these words and exactly with my lightheartedness because this is Uranus for some people. You expect it to be infinitely hard for you and surprise, surprise, you do it with poker face. Because this is Uranus, this is the inner rebel. But let's speak about all the positive side of this energy. Because 
Mercury opposing Saturn, a real, a powerful reality check of the heart, Mercury in the sign of Leo, and Mer uh, Saturn in the sign of Aquarius, mental energy. Do I love that person, that thing, that activity, the past? This rebires the past. There's that person who you loved all your life. Surprise, surprise. Not only don't you love the person right now, but you kind of take away your, the emotional charge of the past. You let go of the past as easily as this. And you, that past, which has been tormenting you for the past 18 years, for example, you let it go like this. You're in a supposing self note. So that's positive. That's very, very positive. Because the healing... And ultimately, karma is instant. When you let it go, something immediately comes in its place. So, for a lot of people, this is a very, very pleasant surprise. This is a really, really positive shock and turn of events. And on the 1st of August, the moon holds a quincunx to this energy. So, you can imagine that we are, we are already feeling this, the moon quincunxing. We are already intuiting the unexpected. And, you know, Neptune trining Venus and also Neptune quincunxing Mercury and the, the Yod aspect. A lot of people dream this, actually. Dream something. It, it plays out, some, so play it close attention to your dreams because your dreams might be literal. And at the same time, Venus sextiling gradually uh, uh, the North Node, Uranus, and Mars. Sextile is getting what you want, ultimately, the most favorable expression of it. Why? Because you put energy onto it. Mental energy, desire energy, work energy, time, whatever it is. And Venus is a powerful value. In the sign of Cancer. So you can imagine that this sex cell is strong. Because it can be karmic. It can be romantic. It can be practical. It can be artistic. It can be spiritual. It can be whatever it is that you make it to be. So for example, if you're single and looking. This is where you... You get into it. And the more awkward your life is in the sense that you may be saying, well, Zen, I don't, don't go anywhere. I don't have a lot of friends. I don't, I don't do all that. How can it come to me, even with Uranus? There is the element of surprise. There is coincidence. You go shopping. You go walking. You, you still do something. And it comes unexpectedly. So this is where, if you're a single lady, this week you might want to have your hair washed all the time. You might want to, you know, how should I say this? Um, remove hairs this week because, surprise, surprise. Even when you're so very sure of yourself that nothing can come your way, it can come still. Or if you're a male... And single, this is where clean your flat. Be, make sure that everything is clean and as it should be. Because you might have a surprise visitor, a surprise date. So those singles who say, ah, na, na, na. Uranus has been activating in my life before and I'm immune to these kind of surprises. Maybe this week you're not immune to the romantic surprise. If you're in a relationship, no problem at all. Uh, something really positive happens either in your life or in the life of your, your partner. A very pleasant surprise. Well, you can imagine that changes hormones. <laughs> Physically and literally, it, it does change hormones in the brain. So imagine that you'll be 10 million times more romantic with your partner. Or you sh sharing joy. You don't need to be physically romantic because imagine you and your partner become children a little bit and you play with children's games and 
you have so much fun or you go out to a playground or in, you do something very, very Uranian together. Imagine the fun. Imagine that the end, at the end of the day, you're going to say, we're definitely going to do this again. Like, let me give you an example, which I saw in the life of an old client of mine. She bought a very, very expensive train set for her child. But her child was, I think, away on a holiday or scouts or something like that. And what did they do with the, her husband? <laughs> they immediately unpacked it and played and played so much that they bought a cheaper set to, for their child. Because they said, well, this train set is for our inner child. Our real child is not neither ha having it, but neither allowed to play, play with it. <laughs> so this was such a Uranian moment. And this was infinitely romantic because the husband and the wife, the parents conspired against the child. Can you imagine? That's pure delight. That's, that's honey. That's the, like the, if the universe is experiencing itself through us. Imagine the laugh that it had. So those are the treasure moments in life, really. So imagine that Uranian moment that's both Taurian, that's both Venusian, that's both Leo, inner, that has all the right stuff on it. And believe it or not, that simple moment of laughter can change a relationship. It can heal wounds. It can make two partners cast off their differences in a millisecond because the fun of it, their hormones are regulated and they not sexually, by fun, by living their own failed childhoods, they realize that, look, us ha being together and even having a child is not a hardship. It's an opportunity. All we need to do is isolate ourselves from normal families and let's live our childhoods. No one has to know. So, of course absolutely healing Uranus is, can be very healing and Uranus usually Uranus does not care about your health <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry this was such a bad joke really sorry but Uranus does not care about our feelings our health our love life our emotional world it's cold in the sign of Taurus it it is forced to care that's why Uranus is in fall in Taurus. It's forced to care. It's a paradox. Anyway, so you can imagine when it is forced to care, that's the, the delightful moments in life. That's when everything is profoundly healing. The small accidents. Everything in life can be healing. Profoundly healing. Love is healing, laughter is healing, joy is healing, being a child is healing. I saw a friend of mine play with his dog like, you know, a 10-year-old boy would play with his puppy. A that person went back in time, traveled time before my eyes because the gestures were that of the gestures were, were that of an eternal child. The person was not 40 anymore. The person was eternally 10, if that even makes sense. That was the innocence. And of course, the almost adult dog was not an adult dog, but was a puppy. The dog did the same thing. That's, that's the moment, the small moment that is a temporal and Uranus beats up Saturn because ultimately Saturn is the planet which is the most aggressed here so to speak and is going to be at the full moon on the 11th of August 3rd 12th 12th of August depending on where you are on the planet 
So you can imagine, when love has a greater power than Saturn, than anything, this is, this is the moment. And laughter, and, and where I wanted to go with this Saturn time, time. In Aquarius, is there such a thing as time? Um, a fr the same friend once told me, look, Time is just your watch. It's not real. It doesn't... No one cares about... There is no such thing in, as time. This week is going to be one of those weeks. And yes, absolutely. You become a child. You become a grandpa, grandma. And you're 20. Why? Well, <laughs> a friend of mine. COVID. And I, as I said, COVID. Yeah. 2020, the events of 2020 are going to be a reminder again this week. Because Mars stands across the sky from the South Node. Mars was a very important key planet in the COVID situation. But anyway, that, that's a different story. So where I want to go with this is that time. Uh, a friend of mine who is young has covid and there are moments when she has to rest just as a 70-year-old person when they get really, really tired. Okay, that has a lot of common sense, but is that not a time travel or a time distortion in itself? Because you know what? The friend will tell me, oh, I can so understand my grandma, my grandpa, the elderly lady, gentleman, and my neighbor, etc. When they, you know, complain how much their this and that hurts them. That's an empathy, but that's all. So you, you can imagine that's awareness. Uranus raises awareness in any way, shape and form. And Saturn, even for us to understand the elderly, even for us to understand children, because it will make us that. It will put us in their shoes. But if you are a person full of love, it will put you in the shoes of... Because what do children and an elderly have in common? They're the same. They're the same sweet. They're the same innocent. They're, they're, the, same. they're the same. Okay, there are some toxic elderly and... Yes! Toxic children? Absolutely. When the soul is something that should not even exist in this world, well, that child is not going to be a normal child. It's going to be a toxic snake. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but this child is ultimately what the soul is. Anyway, there are exceptions, few, but usually elderly and children... They're, they have that special innocence and they have that special openness to the creator, to the divine. Because that's all they have, really. The elderly might have relatives and children to take care of them. Children have parents, but they ultimately both know that their true parent and caretaker is the divine. Or, let's, atheist, a div, a, an intelligent, their own unconscious, or an intelligence that is mysteriously enveloping them. So where I'm, I want to go with this is the child example. How the energy of child and moments of time dilation are profoundly healing, in including in, in areas of life quincunx, which should not be susceptible. Because that, the, my example... Two parents who have a difficult relationship laughing together and becoming in a moment children together, that's a romantic healing. Because you can imagine that their fire sparks up. <laughs> you can imagine that the, their week is going to have more activities and healing moments that ultimately drive from that single childlike moment, the profound healing moment. But this can also be romantic, purely romantic, 
as I said, you're single. And surprise, surprise, maybe you're not. <laughs> in, a, in an instant, in a flash. Or, let's say you, you're single but not really not looking. Uranus, you get that love declaration from your best friend, from a different gender than you expect, from a different age group that you expect. Uranus hits you like a shock. But there is also a powerful moment of karmic breakthrough here. Because Venus stands across the sky from Pluto as well at the end of the week. Venus, not perfect yet, but operational. That's a powerful truth of the heart. But one which leads to either a decision, a compromise, a no going back. Symbolically, you know, in the Bible... There is that depiction of the story where the two cities, Sodoma and Gomorrah, are being destroyed by meteors, shower, fire, rain, or whatever. And those who were uh, invited to leave are told, don't look back. Do not look behind you. And a, a lady does look back and she's turned to salt, stone. There going to be a moment like this. And what I mean by this is, don't look back. The car karma has disconnected you from a lot of people. Not now. Starting for some people, 2012, 2010, 2010, 2012. For most of us, 2017, 2018. And these were completed until 2021 or the Scorpionic Eclipse now in May 2022. Don't look back. Because if stuff happens in the lives of those people, the symbolic fire rain, you can't help. You can't look back. Some relationships cannot be resumed. Has the person truly changed? Or, or are they just coming to you out of sheer desperation if they haven't changed and you know in your heart of hearts that they haven't? You can't look back. Because why would you turn into stone out of the sheer shock and terror that what in their hearts is not what you can accept? So don't look back. Look forward. Always forward to your future, to the present, because this is one of those weeks when we will drop into the present, into the heart, the present, like it or not, want it or not. Let's be wise and want it and co cooperate, collaborate, because the divine does not wish to harm us or hurt us. Let us collaborate. Let us cooperate but still will be dropped in the present and from the present because the present can be the top of the mountain the present can be your moment of success of achievement the reality check of i have to leave behind the version of me who was an underdog who was a failure who was infinitely sacrificial who was who was who was I have to leave that person to die. No, this is where if that reminiscence of you is falling off a cliff and you're at the top of the mountain, you have to do this. Let 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 it fall. Let her or him fall. Because you're at the top of the mountain for a reason. For the eagle spurge to see the world, to see above, to see below, to see in 3D. To see your future, not the past. Don't look down. Let him fall. Let her fall. Look at, look forward at your future. And because your future is. All the planets tell us what your future is. Your future, Sun, Trine, Jupiter at the very end, uh, beginning of the week. 
full of faith, full of love. Sun in the sign of Leo, full of love, full of heart, full of creativity, where your children can be truly happy, not slaves, to school, profession, job, well-being, prosperity, money. Uh, Venus sextiling, Mars, Uranus, and the North Node. This is where, if you're not single, if you have a family, then your family is the building block of the normality of the future. You owe it to yourself and you, yourself is not you, yourself is you within the family. Basically, you're like a South Node in Scorpio. You know, many scorpions, the animal scorpion, actually carry their young on the back on their back and they travel and etc. You're the scorpion in your family, wife, if you're, it doesn't matter who you are, wife, child, etc. The extended family member, you're carrying them karmically because you're a unit, you're a union. The other partner might carry the family emotionally, the other partner materially, the children karmically, Everyone has their share role. So as a family, you're your unit. So that means you owe it to yourselves to, to be happy, to be okay, to have dreams, to be as positive and optimistic and to believe in the love in your family maximally. If you're a family, even if you're just a partner, as in two of you, the two of you, believe in the love of you with every fiber of your being right now. If you're a family or a partnership and the universe is screaming to you to, to, to go separate ways, please do it. If you're single and everything inside of you tells you that you need a partner for your future, then leave whatever blockages you have behind and get yourself the partner that you need. Because quantum, everything is quantum now. What you seek also seeks you. If you are single and do not wish a partner but are seeking your place in the world and you get this crazy epiphany, that's your truth. Do whatever it is that you need to do. And I would like to um, speak about the conjunction of Varuna and a series in the sign of uh, Leo also perfecting itself at the very, very end of next week. That's to me, it's beautiful because it says such a Varuna is sacred water. Varu you know, as Vesta is sacred fire, sacred flame, Varuna is sacred, the most pure water, the life water. Ceres, uh, food, Demetra, Leo, the heart. On one hand, this means if your region territory was subject to a lot of fires, destructive fires, this week you will have some kind of water element fueling it, a com karmic compensation, for example. For other people, it means the purity of heart, either a love story, may that be with a person passion, hobby, spiritual, anything that will simply rebirth the inner ch wash off something that is shame and guilt inside of you. And collectively, this will mean something truly, truly beautiful that will inspire all of us. Either a piece of art, a person, like an artist, a song, something Leo-like. And again, 
Mercury entering into the sign of Virgo, the mental empowerment, the fine details, the can-do, because we will find solutions. We will either we have that person in our lives or we have the potential connection in our lives. We are not alone. And Mercury in the sign of Virgo is the best period to show us that we are not alone. Because the Mercury in Virgo is also service to others. Someone who can service us in any way, shape and form is out there. And we can get connected to the, that person. But the power lies in our hands. Choose love. Choose compassion. Choose faith. Choose to believe in the future. Choose to believe that you are the cell, the foundation cell of a loving future. And feed your family, feed yourself, feed the love in your heart, feed your clients, feed, feed who you love, but feed love, feed love. And this is how we make sure that Uranus revolutionizes with love. And please stay out of fear because it's going to be fearful. But stay out of it. Thank you everyone for listening. Thank you for all the love, all the generosity, all the, all, all the love energy that you guys project on me. And again, sorry for not being able to reply to the comments, but I do read it and everyone, every single comment means so, so much to me. Thank you again. Until next time. Bye for now.